Happy Monday to you. I'm Fox 26 meteorologist Ramisha Shade. Of course, it is time for us to track the tropics. And if you're anything like me, you're hoping for a quiet week. It has been super crazy the last few weeks. We've had, of course, hurricanes Helene and Milton roar across parts of the U.S., really wreaking havoc across Florida. Of course, with Helene, all of that catastrophic flooding across parts of the Carolinas and even into eastern parts of Tennessee down through Georgia and even all the way down to Florida. So guess what? We need a break. We've still got one and a half months to go for this hurricane season and we could still have more tropical systems. Let me give you an overview of what we've had so far. Well, we've already had 13 named storms across the Atlantic Basin. Nine of those have become hurricanes, and out of those hurricanes, four have been major hurricanes. How does that compare to our average so far? For this season, well, we are close to average for the number of name storms, but now we're in that above average category for the number of hurricanes. We've had nine, the average is seven, and we're above average for the number of major hurricanes. We've had four and that average is three. You can see this first column that shows the NOAA forecast that they put out earlier on in the season, calling for 17 to 24 name storms, eight to 13 of those becoming hurricanes and four to seven of those becoming major hurricanes. So we've already reached the hurricane and major hurricane number or range, but we haven't quite gotten there with the name storms, but it looks like we could get there over the next week or two as we are monitoring additional potential systems. Before we get to those potential systems, I still want to show you these lingering power outages across parts of Florida. We have now still 324,000 people without power from Hurricane Milton that, of course, hit Florida last week. Of course, at its peak, we had over 3 million people without power. So, of course, crews have been working hard to get the number down to 324,000, but that's still a lot of people without power. Just checking out Hillsborough County, where Tampa is located, still over 100,000 people without power there. So that is currently the hardest hit area as far as those lingering power outages. Let's talk about our storm names. Of course, we kicked off this season with our very first system, Tropical Storm Alberto, and now we've made it all the way up to Milton, which at one point was churning or spinning in the Gulf of Mexico with 180 mile per hour winds as a monstrous category five. So Milton is long gone. We've gotten rid of Leslie. We are now not dealing with any named storms in the Atlantic Basin. We've gotten rid of all of them, but we do still have that next name on the list, which is Nadine, and we could have Nadine forming over the next week. We could actually have Nadine and Oscar with now not one, but two areas of concern being monitored across the Atlantic Basin. So let's check those out. Here is the first area we're concerned about that does have a much higher chance for tropical cyclone development. And this is going to be Invest 94L kind of sitting in the middle of the Atlantic. Doesn't look like much now. It's in some very dry air, but as it pushes west, it's going to move into a more favorable environment for development and the water temps are still toasty out there. So it's gonna bump up to a 60% shot to turn into a tropical depression, tropical storm or hurricane, likely over the next two to seven days. Notice where it is moving. It's gonna be pushing closer to the Leeward Islands so that some of those islands in the Northeastern Caribbean could be dealing with the tropical system over the next week. So chance for tropical cyclone development over the next 48 hours, like I said, very low. Very slim, 10%, but that jumps up big time over the next week to a 60% shot for tropical development. And like I said, that general movement will be to the west, maybe a little to the west, southwest, but that would take it very close to the Leeward Islands and maybe over towards Puerto Rico, Hispaniola. So we're gonna have to watch this one closely because it looks like if this develops, it might not be just a fish storm. It may actually roll over some more highly populated areas. So we will have to monitor it closely, but there's still some time to watch it as we don't expect development in the short term, but over the next week, it is possible. All right, let's move on to our next area that we're watching. This one actually just popped up on us this afternoon. As of the 2 p.m. update from the National Hurricane Center, they did add this area of concern. This is in the Western Caribbean, the area that you see shaded in yellow. And this is going to be our other area that could possibly produce 
our next tropical depression, tropical storm or hurricane. Notice the chances are low, 0% for the next two days and only a 20% chance over the next seven days. So even over the next week, the chance is low. Notice the area where it is expected to develop is very close to that east coast of Central America. So the National Hurricane Center is thinking that there's a chance it could develop and make a quick landfall in Central America, then it wouldn't really have time to get very strong. But if it manages to develop, if we do get that well-defined area of low pressure that could develop into a tropical depression or tropical storm, and it can manage to stay out over the warm waters, then it could potentially develop as it would likely head closer to the Yucatan Peninsula late in the work week, likely by Friday evening and Friday night. So this is definitely one that we have to monitor. So we're thinking an area of low pressure could form. Our exclusive Fox model future cast does show a little something that we will have to watch over the coming days. By tonight, not really showing much, just an area of disorganized showers and storms, kind of hugging that Central American East Coast, but things start to look more interesting as we go into the later part of the work week. Notice by 4 p.m. Thursday, there's a little disturbance here. It starts to get more organized and starts to track northwest towards the Yucatan Peninsula. So by Friday night, 10 p.m., it looks like we could have something developing, maybe a tropical depression, tropical storm potentially that would be close to Cancun. As you can see, it would be very close to that Yucatan Peninsula, likely either crossing over the Yucatan Peninsula or maybe passing through the Yucatan Channel and emerging in likely the south western Gulf of Mexico. So I think if this happens, the higher likelihood for this system would be for it to likely push into parts of Mexico, since we do have a system that would likely block it from moving towards Houston. But of course, it is something we would watch closely. Anytime you get a system in the Gulf, you got to keep a close eye on it. If we could get a system to develop in the Gulf, the water temps certainly are warm enough to help to fuel this thing. We've still got unusually warm waters, especially for this time of the year. We've made it all the way to the middle of October. So typically you would think the water temps would start to cool down with the stronger front starting to push in from the Northwest, but that has not been the case. I did see the water temp just to the south and east of Mobile last week going to the upper 70s, but now it's all the way back up to 82 degrees. So for the most part, those water temperatures still in the low to middle 80s all across the Gulf, the Western Atlantic and the North and Western parts of the Caribbean. So we still have conditions that can still be fairly ideal for these tropical storms, tropical systems to pop up. So we're still monitoring the area in orange with the highest risk. These are going to be the hot spots for the last two weeks of October. Highest risk for tropical storm formation. So that's going to be the Southeastern Atlantic, Western Caribbean and parts of the Western Atlantic. Keep in mind, though, the areas in yellow are still going to be areas where we could have tropical systems popping up. So we've got to keep a close eye on those areas as well. Now, as we jump into November in about two weeks, notice the chance for tropical depressions, tropical storms, hurricanes really starting to decrease, at least historically. However, here's the problem. We still have unusually warm waters out there in the Gulf of Mexico, Caribbean, and even in parts of the Atlantic. So our activity chance will likely be a little higher than what this map is showing. But typically, things kind of start to wind down in the last month of hurricane season in November, where there's a low chance for development across parts of the western and central Atlantic, maybe in the central western parts of the Caribbean, and not really much of a shot for the Gulf of Mexico. So if we can get to November, with no action for the Houston area pushing in from the Gulf, then our chances really start to fall off in November as far as that tropical cyclone development. So keep your fingers crossed. Make sure to stay alert. Don't panic if something pops up, but just keep in mind that you need to be prepared in case we do have any of these systems heading our way. Nothing heading towards Houston now, but you always want to make sure that you have your hurricane emergency gear ready to go. Make sure you have your insurance papers protected and know where they are. And also make sure you protect yourself. If you need to evacuate, know those evacuation routes. We are in the middle of October at this point. So like I said, two weeks left in October. We've got all of November, and then we can finally give you the all clear, at least for 2024. Then we'll have to wait it out during the winter and see what comes at us 
for next year. But at this point, at least no hurricanes out there, no named storms. We're just monitoring one tropical wave in the central Atlantic and one potential area for development in the Western Caribbean. So of course, we'll continue to give you these updates daily and let you know what happens with those two systems and any additional ones that may try to give us trouble. I'm Fox 26 meteorologist Ramesha Shade. Enjoy the rest of your day.